Hey everyone, Taku here and I hope you're doing well. And in this video, I thought I'd take you on location to one of my favorite fields out in my local parks where I photograph the monarch butterflies. Now this is exactly the location where I, take, uh, where I took a lot of pictures this uh, fall. And uh, I'll give you some tips and tricks on what I did to create these images that I really like for my butterfly photography. So let's get to it. So every fall season, we're lucky enough here in my local city to have the monarch butterflies migrate through our various parks. Now they migrate in the fall from their uh, nesting grounds up north to the feeding ground down south and they stop over at the many parks here along the way. I do know that in the uh, Point Pelee National Park where I tend to go to during the springtime, they actually migrate by the thousands down there as well before they fly further south. Uh, so it's great to be able to capture whatever uh, monarch butterflies happen to be around my local park area. And so I love to be able to uh, find them and uh, photograph them in the best available light. Now, monarch butterflies are listed as a vulnerable species, and that's primarily due to the loss of habitat region, some pesticide use, and even climate change is having a, an impact as the temperature fluctuations can affect their habits. It's increasingly important to appreciate the monarch butterflies as the number of them migrating have been diminishing a little bit year by year. So I've become, I become uh, more appreciative of the fact that I can even see butterflies here in our local parks during that migration season. Uh, so I really appreciate the fact that I can uh, take their photographs as they still fly through the areas. So when we're photographing butterflies, you obviously need butterflies. Now, you're not gonna see any today just because I've come here to the field after they have already migrated south to their feeding grounds. So I thought I'd just take you through this field and see what I've been looking at through my lens with the Nikon Z9 and the Z180 to 600 millimeter at 5.6 to 6.3 lens. Now, where do you find these butterflies? Well, if you go to your local parks, chances are you'll see some monarchs flying about here and there. They are usually in the pollinator gardens that people or cities plant themselves. So right here, I'm finding myself in a field of asters. Now, that's the purple flowers that you see here. And that's where the butterflies of this area are uh, attracted to. So I was looking for asters uh, growing abundantly inside any fields for the butterflies to be attracted to. And sure enough, when I came to this park, there were a few of them flying around everywhere, allowing me to photograph them as they did their business with the asters. Now, let's take a look at these asters. Over here, you can see that they're actually bunched up and not even open. Uh, while you do have some open ones here where it's actually showing the center portions of the asters and that's important because you're not going to find any butterflies when you have asters that are bunched up close like this. Now they do tend to open up a lot more when there is sunlight uh, shining on them so you probably have to wait a little bit after sunrise in order to find these asters ready for the butterflies. So as you can see, it's a little bit windy today. And wind is not something that you really want when you're photographing butterflies because that will in itself shake the uh, flowering plants uh, all over the place and making it hard for you to focus, especially if you have a telephoto lens like I do at 600 millimeters. So now that we've confirmed that we want sunlight to open up the flowers so that attracts the butterflies, what do you do when you find a field of butterflies? Now, it all boils down to composition and your techniques in photography. And that's what I'll get into right now. So let's get to it. All right, so this is one of the favorite enclaves, as you will, uh, in the parks that I came to photograph the monarch butterf butterflies. And it's my favorite because, for one thing, it's very, very colorful. As you can see here, 
we had the purple New England asters flowering all around into the field, right inside to the field. And as well surrounding that, you have the beautiful golden, uh, golden rods here, which were shining very brightly in orange and yellow glory as the sunlight was hitting them. Uh, and they are a little bit wilted now just because it, it is after the season. Uh, however, if we came here maybe a few weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, it would have been in bright bloom. Um, really beautiful for photography. And scattered in throughout the field, we also have the green leaves that are changing to red of the shumac trees. Now, uh, when we accompany all those colors, as well as the little, I don't know if you can see them here, but there are little white flowering uh, plants as well here. So we have all these mixtures of colors, not to uh, mention the green tall grasses as well, that it really makes for beautiful photography, especially when you're shooting at a telephoto range where you can incorporate all those colors uh, in the foreground as you focus on the butterfly in the background. So I'm going to try and show you exactly what I'm seeing here as I shoot through the field of flowers here. So come with me here and I'll show you what I'm seeing on my viewfinder. Now here I'm looking through the golden rods, seeing if I can find an open spot. And there we go right there. We have the asters where we can anticipate seeing the butterflies land there. Now as soon as I find them, Obviously, I need to focus, find my focus on them. Once I have my focus on the asters in the distance, then I'll actually move around here until I find a really good pocket, just like right here. I'm finding a really nice pocket of uh, a hole where I can see my asters in the center there, and I'm surrounded by the yellow of the golden rods, especially the ones in the foreground that are making a really nice foreground element to add uh, and uh, add a sense of depth to my images. Once I have that composition ready, I know in my head that if the butterfly ha happens to fly on those asters, then I can somehow come to this area, compose and see if I can get that composition that I was looking for. Otherwise, obviously I'll change my footing a little bit and still use the uh, area around there as my composition because I really like the foreground element of the yellow uh, golden rods that are surrounding the purple asters. Now let's try for another composition here where I think I see an opening just right here where the asters are and in the background you see the uh, red and the green of the shumac trees and I absolutely love that background element so let's see what I can find here. I'll show you in my viewfinder. There we go. Right there. There's the purple asters. I have a little bit of uh, the foreground of the golden rods that are blowing and then I also have the red of the shumacs. So anywhere here as long as the butterfly flies on those uh, purple asters then I will be able to photograph uh, them by actually moving my footing around where I am right here and I believe I'm at 160 right now. So they're not actually that far. So I can even zoom in all the way to 600 to get really close up and to even get a little bit more of the foreground blur from the golden bronze. Now, as I'm moving around at 600, you do have to be careful, move around a little, little bit slowly so that you can gain, uh, maintain that focus throughout. Um, and you can see the shumac trees there. Now as I move around a little bit more, you'll be able to see, or I'll be able to find more openings in between the branches of the trees and the golden rods. And that's essentially what I do. I look through my viewfinder and look for a composition that I like because 
seeing the composition with my eyes here is a little bit different than seeing the composition at 600 millimeters with your lens. You'll be able to see a lot more with this lens than you can without uh, the lens itself. So it helps to look through the viewfinder uh, and then move around in order to see that composition that you like. And once you know where that composition is, then you'll be easily uh, be able to go back to it uh, when you find the monarch butterflies uh, flying on those very uh, plants that you were looking at through your lens. So another tip in photographing butterflies is you want to be able to get to the same eye level as they are. You want to try and avoid to photograph them to, from too far above them or too uh, far below them and uh, try and get them as they are at the same level on, on the plant as they are. So that often means either shrugging down like I am right here or perhaps maybe uh, doing a little bit of a squat here as you try and find the butterflies out in the field uh, like so. Now that may make it a little bit more difficult for you to find them but uh, oftentimes you might want to kneel down on one knee or both knees and photograph them. I've been uh, doing that quite often and uh, once you actually get down to the eye level as them you'll be able to see exactly where they are and if they are perched on top of the top of a uh, an aster for example then you'll be able to see them with the foreground of the uh, yellow golden rods just uh, below them as well so that does make for a pretty picture uh, if you're able to find that right composition now, uh, speaking of telephoto lenses, one of the advantages of having that is that you do not need to go as close to the butterfly as you would need to had you had, let's say, a 70 to 200 millimeter. And that's the primary advantage of using the telephoto lenses is that you don't scare the butterflies away as you approach them to get any closer than you need to. So because I've seen these butterflies out far into the fields, inside, all over uh, this area and even behind there, I've often found that actually 600 millimeters is not even close uh, enough to capture some of the butterflies that are uh, further into the field. So what I did was once I've come to the location, I stayed there anticipating that the butterflies will eventually come a little bit closer and closer to me. Had I chased the butterflies all around the field, they would simply fly away as soon as I approached them and that would revert me to just running around the field without getting any photos to begin with. So once you found your spot where the butterflies are, stay there and wait for them to come to you and then you'll be greeted with all the butterflies that are not afraid of you because you're already there as they had flown into uh, your shooting range. Speaking of the sun, you do want to make note of a couple of things and that is in which direction the sun is and how high the sun is located. So if the sun is in this direction as you can see right now and I'm pointing my camera towards the sun, then you do want to make sure that you don't have the sun inside your frame just because you're going to be uh, getting that flare and uh, it won't actually look too nice within your image but it does add a little bit of a backlighting to the butterfly and that makes for a nice image as well. If you're shooting with the sun at the back of you then you're actually lighting the butterflies without getting the sun in your frame and that's actually a pretty nice uh, picture as well and finally if the sun is lower to the horizon let's say right after sunrise or right before sunset then you're going to get a little bit of a more uh, warmer tone to your images and uh, that actually casts a really really nice uh, light to your butterfly images if it's higher up then you're going to get a bluer a cooler sunlight towards your images and uh, that's not to say that's bad but uh, you're just not going to be able to get that warmth in your image that you were able to get at sunrise or sunset. 
So your uh, camera settings are also very important when you're photographing monarch butterflies. Depending on if they are still on the plant or if they're flying around around the plant, you will need a fast shutter speed. Uh, so I'm finding that at a minimum, if they're flying, you probably want at least about one or two thousandth of a second shutter speed, even faster if they're actually fluttering about really quickly and haphazardly around the area. If they are stationed on the plant and not moving around, you can go a lot less than that. And as for aperture, I probably want to stick around at least an f6.3, maybe even f8 or 9, uh, just really depending on uh, obviously your focal length and as well how much of the background you want in focus. Uh, less than f6.3, I'm finding that you're not getting the entire butterfly in focus um, depending on the angle that they're in. So it's important to be able to capture precisely the entire butterfly that you want focused. And in order to achieve that, I'm, I'm finding that around f6.3, f8 uh, is actually the minimum that I would go. Uh, and being able to capture the details on the wings, the head and the body. At times I'm finding that if they're on a slight angle, I'm not even able to capture the details of the body or maybe parts of the wing is actually blurred just because of um, my aperture. And as for ISO, well, use that accordingly to your situation, also depending on what your aperture and your shutter speed is. If you have burst mode on your camera, I would recommend using that. Uh, it really helps you to get that one slice of moment uh, that you're looking for, whether they're flying off a flower, onto a flower, or flying around somewhere in the field. Burst mode really helps you uh, to be able to get that one precise moment. Now, whatever you have, whether it's four frames per second, five frames per second, it really helps um, uh, more than if you didn't have burst mode at all. In my case with the Z9, it was 20 frames per second raw images, so that really helped me to pinpoint that exact moment that I wanted to capture with my photographs. So as you can see, surrounding me is the entire field of goldenrods, shumac trees, asters, and these uh, little white flowering buds as well. Uh, we have plenty of color opportunities here. And uh, during the migration period, we had a lot of the monarchs that are fluttering about here and there. So I had the freedom of walking around anywhere around here uh, and being able to find the monarch butterflies. So I really had a great time. The 180 to 600 actually proved to be a really good focal length for these butterflies as they were actually flying out in further into the field or if they came closer to me. I hope you enjoy the photos in the slideshow that I will show you.
that's pretty much my method in photographing the monarch butterflies. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, in the field uh, explanation of what I tried to do. I tried to show you within my camera as well some of the uh, things that I look for and I hope the next time the monarch butterflies fly into your region you're able to capture some wonderful images of them as well. They are precious and I hope to see more of them in my local region as well. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.